With winter fully descended upon Canada, I have come to Moab in Utah to ride my bike. Over five days, I rode the technical Captain Ahab, took on Slick Rock on my e-bike, scared myself on the gnarly portal, and then finished things off with two more double black trails. And this is what you're gonna see in this video. This is the third time I featured Captain Ahab on my channel, and it's got some strange memories for me. While there's the nostalgia of creating one of my first ever videos Easy. here, the sometimes awkward tech oh, oh, isn't yeah, really up my street. Oh, Along the trail, there are definitely some challenges, starting off with this kind of rock skinny to drop. I mean, it rolls really easy. Oh, oh it's just good to go. Ah, yeah. Oh, no. And you're done. I would have loved to have nailed this, but once again, I was left defeated. As some of you know, my relationship with riding has been pretty odd this year, and it's times like this where I just haven't oh. practiced my skills enough to be confident on the bike. But that's what I'm looking to put right on this yeah. trip around America, and I can already feel yes. that desire to yes. improve coming back. So if this sounds oh. like something you'd like to follow along with, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You don't even have to pay oh, for it. Like Riding with Katrina and Casey today, we had a great flow going down this trail. Oh, easy. Come on, come on. Oh, blind. After actually cleaning almost the entire climb up to Ahab, I had forgotten just how much flow there is in this upper section of the trail. Yes, there are a bunch of punchy climbs oh that can my. catch you off guard, but for the first time, I started to feel like everything was actually oh, linking up a lot Ahab. more smoothly. As we start the lower section of Captain Ahab, which is rated as a double black trail, I'm gonna slot in some shots that I managed to get with the Skydio oh. drone after our ride. With no trees to get in the way in the desert, the drone works great and really shows how much you're on the side of a cliff when you're riding. I actually had no idea. Something that keeps people coming back to this trail is finding the optional sidelines that can make each lap fresh. <laughs> the trail builder Tyson really has crafted something that ramps up in difficulty as you make your way down. On the lower section, you feel as though everything you've ridden before has prepared you for what's yeah, to come. Yeah. Despite not having ridden this trail for about three years, I was amazed at how much I could remember, and I think that's really when Ahab becomes fun. Ah, oh, yes! Oh my god, I'm doing technical climb bits! The other huge plus is that the Transex Advanced Pro that I'm riding was almost made for this kind of lap. A trail bike that has some really aggressive geometry and big wheels is perfect. <sighs> A few Please. people have asked me this year why I got this bike instead of a rain, and it's this exact situation. Having a familiar all-rounder to ride helps me get the most out of pretty much any trail. One thing that I was particularly happy with was how many times I actually tried to do a technical climb. I'm a technical climber! This in turn helped keep the flow going much better, which is probably the reason I didn't enjoy this trail as much as I did the first time around. This is oh. definitely a lesson learned. I think that's the most clean I've ever done that trail. Literally like two dabs. I mean zero. For day two, I wanted to get the e-bike out. While still respecting the local trail restrictions, as a lot of the trails here have a no pedal assist policy. The easiest option here was to head over to the world famous Slick Rock Trail and see just how much more enjoyable it could be with some extra watts at my disposal. I realized that this would be something like day six in a row where I was riding. So the E-Rain Plus meant that I still have some energy to keep going. So I've done a couple videos on Slick Rock. I think this is probably gonna be the easiest one I've ever done. This trail is full of punchy climbs and it can be brutal, but uh, I mean, well, we can guess what it's gonna be like on an e-bike. Okay, this is like the first climby challenge bit, I think. Can I do it first time? <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> but that brutality is really what keeps most people away from doing this loop on the regular. If I remember rightly, the full clockwise loop has previously taken me more than four hours to get round, which is a decent amount of time to be out riding. But the views and the scenery up here are incredible, as you can see from this drone footage. I'm just really curious to see how different 
my slow karaoke experience is going to be on the Eeb. It's a great test of your fitness as well as your riding technique, but I don't want to test myself physically all the time, oh, yeah. and that's down. why I have an e-bike. After doing the first two big climbs, I realized that I was still putting in some Let's work. Go. Of course, it's nothing like what it would be on the Trans X, but it certainly wasn't effortless. Go, 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 go. Hey, it's a lot easier with a motor, I gotta tell oh. you. <laughs> I'm really nervous about this one. This one's just very hard. Okay, we're in max power. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm going up. Oh my God. Oh no, I'm bailing out. I'm bailing. Oh, kind of. <laughs> and this is what I thought about as I approached the hardest climb on the trail. Let's do this. Come on, come on. Yes, 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 don't go left, don't go left, don't go left, come on, come on! Yo! Oh! The physical effort might have been easier, but it's still technical. I'd got around Ooh. the first half of the trail in about an hour, which is ridiculous. It's very easy to go on and on about why this bike has a place in my garage, so I'm just gonna stop going on about it being so good and switch to sharing what I was learning about my riding thanks to the added assistance. After taking go. down the mega climb, go, no, go. no idea what it's actually go. called, so I'll going name it up, that, up, I was understanding going. how the bike would oh, yeah. behave on those steeper oh, oh, oh. sections of trail. And I think it transferred into my riding on the trail bike. Rather than think I would just slip out or just fall over while trying something, I was learning just how much grip I had on my tires and that by getting my chest closer to the bars and keeping the pedals turning, I was gonna get up pretty much anything. As I closed out the loop, I was enjoying myself so much. This really is such a gorgeous trail. The views, the terrain, the pure fun of riding Flipper the e-bike up anything made for the perfect day. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, almost, almost, Flipper. Getting me out of trouble. What a bike. What a bike indeed. By the end, I'd used about 40% of the battery and it took me just under two hours to get round. And I really wasn't trying to go that fast. Day three was the exact opposite of that though. And in the spirit of trying something new, we headed to Pipe Dream, a black trail pretty close to town. I started the day off with my worst nightmare. My tire gauge had stopped working. You won't believe it. This is a super relatable problem. You're all gonna completely sympathize. This, my tire pressure gauge has just broken. I don't know how I'm gonna ride. This is possibly the worst thing that could have happened. This was pushing myself in a different way. I would describe Pipe Dream as a very physical trail. If you think you're going down, you're about to go up. Visually, it's not that exciting either, but I wanted to include it briefly. If you're looking to get fitter or perhaps put your lungs to the test, it's a perfect lap. But if you're in Moab on a riding trip, probably not something I recommend you do. But one of my goals is to get comfortable with the type of riding I normally can't stand. So here I am. I'm happy I did it, but likely won't be back in a hurry. Great news, everyone fixed this, all thanks to Moab Cyclery. The mechanic there pointed out that you can actually unscrew that thing. You can actually unscrew the air release and clean it out. It was all gunked up with the tubeless fluid. This is the nightmare on the inside. Look at how many emergency things are going on. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of these van travel people just like say that everything is glorious all the time, but it <laughs> never is. However, I'm in a very privileged position right now because especially back home, Canada, there's been crazy floods. That's what's going on in the news right now. So hopefully everyone's gonna be safe. You may have noticed that there are a few goals cropping up here. And here's one that might seem a bit odd. Over the past 18 months with everything that's been going on, I've found it tricky to find that motivation to seek out new experiences, preferring to err on the side of familiarity, which ironically has created some bad habits and probably the cause of why I got so burnt out on riding. But in Moab, I joined in with this eclectic mix of people, all with their own reasons for being there. And it was great to listen to those experiences. So I just wanna say a quick thanks to all the people in this van gang. I mean, it's not really a gang, but you get the idea. Now it's time for the scary riding. Portal is pretty world famous at this point, and the only real way of describing it is that it's scary as hell. 
The trail follows along this cliff and you are riding inches away from certain death. So certain in fact that I heard if one more person meets their end, it's gonna get shut down. Getting there can be tricky too. Most people will take the Mag 7 trail system and ride for a few hours before reaching this double black trail of doom. But today we took the poison spider route, which is primarily a jeep trail. You might hear people talking about how this is nothing but a sufferfest and a quintessential nightmare. Yeah, there's no way I'm doing that. But I really enjoyed it. The scenery is totally unique and if you don't get annoyed by the misery that is sand riding, the slick rock is pretty cool to ride. As you speed on down to the start of the trail, the exposure comes at you out of nowhere. Oh, 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 oh. This is a classic thing to say in a video of this trail, but nothing prepares you for just how sheer this cliff really is. It's so close to the edge, I just could not look anywhere but right. What would be simple trail obstacles are turned into pro-line features. There were many times I thought I was about to clip a pedal and just tumble down <laughs> over the edge. <laughs> this is almost a joke. This is by far the gnarliest trail I have ever been on. I am petrified right now. Oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh. I have actually ridden in some crazy places all over the world. I have never done anything like this. The signs are very clear with their message and I couldn't really understand what points you were actually meant to write. <laughs> no human should be here. But eventually you get past this and the trail turns into something that oh I could probably say fuck. is some of the best trail I've ever ridden. Your bike gets bumped around a whole lot and there are a bunch of very tight switchbacks that I've fully accepted are my kryptonite at this point. But overall, it's so well built and thought out, I was really impressed. It was also on this trail that I realized I really should be running my rebound a bit more open and have some faster working suspension. There were many times where I've been riding over the past couple of weeks that I didn't really feel like the Transex was carrying as much speed as it should do and it was getting caught up on a lot of the trails I was riding. Are you the support dog? I need some support. Oh, thank you. And since this time here in Moab, I've been trying to run things a bit more open and get used to this adjustment. I am I'm getting smoked by this trail. <laughs> and it's definitely making things a bit better. It's definitely not as predictable as running it slow like I was, but keeping that momentum rolling far outweighs the negatives. I was very pleased to finally have this one ticked off. I mean, of course, I barely rode the thing, but I'll go away and work on that tight corner technique and have another crack at some point in the future. This is where Team Slow and Awkward really comes into its own. And that's not where the double blacks end. In the same area as Captain Ahab, you can find Rockstacker and Jackson's trails. Rockstacker starts off with a bit of a roll, but it's no problem whatsoever with these big wheels. Exposure on the left, and then this is the first little wall. I hit a tree. First little rock roll. And then you want to stay. Oh no, just go straight. Oh no. Oh! <laughs> Straight after, you'll find this very technical sand covered rock that I am kicking myself for for not riding down. There's a straight line on the left, and I'm sure if I'd seen someone do it, I would have dropped straight on in, but I didn't. The right line that Katrina did here is very technical, and I had no clear vision of me making this turn. So I made the solid self-employed business decision and skipped it. The rest of the trail is pretty mellow by comparison. A few rolls here and there and some tight switchbacks, but it's not all that exciting to watch. But the views are fantastic. Ah. Oh. I mean, I don't want to say graceful, but I mean graceful. Jackson's is a lot more exposed. Not quite portal levels, but still on the edge. It's full of small drops and punchy climbs, oh all the while you're trying to stay away from the rocks on the right without going down the cliff on the left. You can see by the marks on the rocks just how many people have been clipping their pedals as you get to a section, and it's pretty unnerving. But on the whole, it's a very enjoyable trail. Of course, it's clear that it's not 100% my kind of thing, but that's what this whole week in Moab has been about, riding things that aren't my first choice. Chris and Katrina were great company on this ride, and we got out there with zero damages. Welcome back to Speed Run, every trail in Moab. I'm Paul Punter, fastest mountain biker in the world. 
but you probably knew that already. <laughs> oh, it's probably fine, isn't it? <sighs> Tripod. Zero dabs, nailed it. With that done, it's time to move on to the next location. Where should I go? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this, then hit the like button. Subscribe to catch the next video. But most importantly, watch this one twice. Cheers, punters. I'll see you next time.